The war in heaven is not over. It continues. What is the war in heaven? Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So there's a spiritual war in heaven. And there's a spiritual war on earth. It's not over. It continues. And it will continue until the end of days. Until time's up. Until the Lord comes. Amen. And we are in the midst of that war. You can't refute it. You can't deny it. You can't pretend you're not. Because you are. What do we do in the midst of a war? How do we fight the wickedness and the evilness that is brought upon us by demonic forces? My wife and I were driving to Chilliwack yesterday, and she turned to me and she said, Honey, we don't even understand the tip of a finger of what evil is in the world. We don't even have a clue how much evil is going on in this world and how much wickedness there is. And it's true. And we fight that. We fight the unknown. So I'm going to dig into that, and I'm going to hopefully give you an idea of how to fight the war that's going on and raging in the world and around you. Amen. The 20th century has really been hard. And it's been sometimes tumultuous times. There was Pearl Harbor. There was D-Day, the atomic bomb, the ushering in of TV, which is the greatest destruction on mankind ever designed, except for the internet. The revelation of the 60s, or revolutions of the 60s, Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon, the destruction of the Berlin Wall, There's the arrival of computers and the internet, and I've just touched on a few things that have happened in the 20th century. So peace on earth, has it ever been? Has there ever been any peace on this earth since the beginning of time? Cain kills Abel. Beginning of destruction of peace. It actually happened in the garden, didn't it? With Eve being deceived. That old slimy snake. Snakes make good shoes, good boots. And good purses. But they don't make nothing else good. Amen. In the last few years, it has been nothing short of peace, right? People living in fear of each other. Steve and I were talking about that this morning. So-called viruses invented by madmen to separate the world into two categories. Amen? What do you think it's all about, the virus? It's a satanic move by Satan, to separate Christians and God's people. It's the ushering in of the Antichrist. That's what it is. It's the beginning of fear. The fear of the Lord is wisdom, and depart from iniquity is understanding. God has not called us to fear the world or the things of Satan. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power over fear, and a sound mind in the midst of fear. Amen? Do all of you have that? Amen? Are you all walking in that? Because if you're not, it's going to be very hard for you. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 5.3 says, When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They always cry for peace and safety, signing peace treaties with Palestine and 
and all kinds of things trying to usher in peace, but that's not going to happen. Because in the midst of that, sudden destruction comes on the earth. The late West German Chancellor Kohl said these words, the wheel of history is turning faster now than ever before. And we can see that, can't we? We're in the midst of that turning wheel. And what we must cling to is that we serve a loving Heavenly Father who wants us to know that this world and its troubles will not last forever. One of my favorite scriptures in the Word of God is this. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. When you see things come, when you hear things come, when you hear the ridiculous decisions of our leaders of the world, all you got to do is say to yourself, this too will pass. So I'll just continue on serving Jesus. I'll just continue on loving my Father because this is going to pass. Why? Because the Bible says it will. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, that's why Jesus is there for us. He's a heavenly Father who wants us to know that the world and its troubles will not last forever. He wants us to know that. And that's why he's there for us. So we can know that. John gave, Jesus gave John the revelations in which they would take place. The book of Revelation. Revelations 1.19. Write these things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. He's telling John, he says, John, I want you to write the things that I show you. And then I want you to write the things which are, and now I want you to write down the things that are going to happen in the future. God has shown us everything in the Bible, what's going to happen in the future. It's right there in front of us. It's in the book called the Holy Bible. Amen. And it's yours to pick up and read. If you're just believing in what the news says or the newspaper said and you're not comparing it with the gospel, no wonder you're confused. Amen. You've got to read the gospels and see what Jesus says about what's going on. That's why many people don't read the book of Revelations. I can't read that. I don't understand that book. There's too many things in there and too many mystical things in there to understand. It's just like so hard. Are you saved? If you're saved, you have been deposited with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit shall teach men all things. Amen. When I read scripture and I come to a part of scripture where I just, I can't figure it out. I say, Lord, I pray, I says, Lord, I can't figure this out. What do, you, what do you mean? What are you trying to tell me? Amen. So my daughter got a phone call and she didn't know what that, from the appraisers for her accident, she didn't know what that meant. I says, well, phone them and find out. When you don't know what you, when you're reading the scriptures, you don't know what it means, you need to make, you need to make a phone call to Jesus. And say, Lord, what does this mean? I don't understand it. How can I apply what you're telling me to my life? What are you trying to say to me? And you ask him. Amen? Because there's all kinds of teachers out there. And you might get all kinds of conflicting answers, but you'll never get a conflicting answer from the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Martin Luther. He said this about the book of Revelations. My spirit cannot adapt itself to the book of Revelations. And a sufficient reason why I do not esteem it highly is that Christ is neither taught nor recognized in it. How wrong could a man be, especially a man who professes to be a Christian? and a teacher of Christian doctrine. But there's many in life that do. Many people that call themselves Christians confess they don't understand the book of Revelations. Might be helpful if you read them. Amen. 
might be helpful if you take your book off the shelf and begin to read it. That's why God gave us the Bible. It wasn't written by men who are inspired by the Holy Ghost for nothing. It wasn't set in a Bible, the King James Bible, by King James and all the scholars who wrote it and put it in there for nothing. It wasn't found with no purpose by a young shepherd boy throwing a rock in the Damascus caves and then finding broken scripture in jars in the corn caves too and brought forth to be put together for nothing. It was all designed by God. The word of God was designed for you so we could understand it and live purposely for Christ through it. Amen. That's why it's so important to read it. Book of Revelations. Revelations 1, 1 to 3 says these words about the book of Revelations. It says, you, the revelation of Jesus Christ was God gave unto him to show unto his servants. That's you. Things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth. Why should we read the book of Revelation? Because you are blessed when you read it. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So you are blessed. When you read the book of Revelations. And you are blessed when you hear it. It's one thing to read the word. But are you hearing what God's trying to tell you about the word? I heard you're into the word. Getting into the word. But is the word getting into you? Amen. The word of God can only get into you if you allow it and hear it. And allow it to get into you. Amen. Applying it to your life. Instead of just reading it and letting it skip over somewhere else in life. And going on without applying the word of God to your life. That's called religion. Amen. God's designed us to love his word. Amen. Why do we read the book of Revelation? Because the time is near. Christ is coming. Soon. Soon. Oh, they said that 2,000 years ago, but the day of the Lord is like 1,000 years, so we're only in the second day of the Lord. (laughs) He's coming soon. We have to prepare ourselves for him. We have to be ready for the bride. Now, you don't want to get dressed for the bride as a groom and put on ugly clothes for your wedding. I saw Kellen in a suit for the first time in my life at his wedding. (laughs) <laughs> and I went up to him and I went up to him and says, Kellen, I am so blessed today. And he says, why? Because you're wearing a suit. Amen. And I'm blessed to see that. Dressed up for his bride. Amen. The word of God dresses you up for the bride. Cleanses your heart, purifies your heart, makes you walk in the right direction towards Christ, the righteousness of Christ, not our own righteousness, keeps you from unrighteousness. All these things happen when you read the book of Revelations and the book of the Bible, the whole Bible. Amen? That's why it's so important. Lewis Talbot, he's uh, responsible for the Talbot Ministries or some kind of church thing. But I I was interested in what he said about the book of Revelation, so I wrote it down. Many people treat the book of Revelation like the priest and the Levites treated the man who was beaten and robbed in the story of the Good Samaritan. How many remember that story? They passed by on the other side. Didn't help them. The devil has turned thousands of people away from the book of Revelation. He does not want anybody to read a book that tells of his being cast out of heaven. Nor is he anxious for us to read of the ultimate triumph of his enemy, Jesus. 
So the more you study the book of Revelation, the more you understand why Satan fights so hard to keep God's people away from it. Amen? Doesn't want you to know of his failure, of his defeat, of the victory of Christ. Take, for instance, the way atheism is resurrected in the world today. Have you, ever noticed, have you noticed that? How atheism has resurrected itself in politics? In every agenda in the world, atheism has resurrected itself. There is no God. Politicians blaspheming God. Barack Obama, Justin Trudeau, on live television, in front of the world. On a bus in New York, is a sign saying, in the beginning, man created God. On another bus, it says, you can be good without God. There's a 12-foot banner dropped across, uh, draped across the Empire State Building in New York. And it says, you don't have to believe in God. Another slogan, don't believe in God, you're not alone. In Italy, it says the bad news is that God does not exist. The good news is that you do not need him. On a London bus, there's probably no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. No wonder there's so many people in the world that are confused about who God is with signs like this all over the world, everywhere in sight, in plain sight. Amen? You know, I've never really come across anybody who can actually prove that God does not exist, have you? There's no such thing as atheism. There's not. Because they cannot prove that God does not exist. At all. It's impossible. Hallelujah. Even the so-called atheists, whom I doubt even exists, will stand before God, whom they deny. It's true. What does Revelations 1 say, 7 say? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye, even the atheists. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Everybody will see him. Everybody will wail because of him. There's no escape for anybody. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every tongue. Atheists, Muslims, Buddhists, all kinds of people. People in higher places, they will all confess before God and be judged. Amen? Today, mankind is groaning under pressure. There's wars and rumors of wars. Nations rising up against nations. They're joining each other, China and Russia. They're joining each other to bring a war upon the world. Say they're trying to usher in World War III. Folks, nothing's going to be done until the coming of the Lord. Until the Lord takes us out of here. Amen? Don't live in fear. When you hear something in the news, when you read something in the newspaper, you just go, Satan has no idea about the power of the living God and his hold on this earth. He can't do anything unless God allows him to do it. Amen. Let's go on. We've already been prepared for everything that is happening on this earth. In the book of Revelations. Jesus prophesies and gives us a warning of things to come. Revelations 1 to 3. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words 
of this prophecy, keep those things which are written thereof, for the time is at hand. Hear and keep. Hear the word of God and keep the word of God in your heart. That's the number one thing we need to do when we go through life. Is read your scriptures, pray, and believe in the scripture of Jesus Christ. And live them out in your life. Revelations 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let's skip over to 2 Corinthians 5, 8. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. You've got to be confident in your Christian walk that what you read and what you keep is from the Lord. Amen. And be able, able to continue in your faith. Don't let nothing distract you from your walk in Christ. Nothing. And there's a lot of distractors. There's a lot of people that want to come and, and take and rip your faith off. And they're joy stealers. That's what they are. They want to steal your joy. Amen? So they tell you things that they have no power over. And that they really can't do anything. Amen? You know why? Because they have you. We're in the world. And when God's people are in the world full of the Holy Spirit, there's not much people can do. Because we have the freedom fighters. We have the people at the truckers. We have the farmers. What I mean is we have God's people rising up all over the earth. Fighting against the forces of evil. That's what he's called us to do. Not to just sit back and enjoy Sunday church. Thank God you do. You come to church and enjoy it. But take the word and let it live out there. Let it live out there in the circumstances of life. Tell people about Jesus. Stand for things. Amen? Hallelujah. Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches. Do we have watchers here? Amen? And keeps his garments. That means keep his word. At least he walked naked and they see his shame. Keep his word. Because people always try to make you compromise his word. Because they don't want you living for Christ. That's why we have the economical churches. That wasn't just started a short time ago. That was started in 1968. And it's just grown to a point in the last four, five, six years, maybe ten years, that has just been by all these big churches. Amen? There's lots of places people go because they have itchy ears. I don't like the word of God that's preached in that potter house. It's just too simple. It's right from the word. I like that word. Money. I can smell it. If I give a thousand, I'll get ten thousand. Word of faith movement. Economical movement. Walk deliberate. You can walk deliberate in our church. That's Satanism. That's what they do in the Catholic Church. I'm sorry, but I just. I read about all this stuff, I look at all this stuff, and I go, this world is crazy. Why is it so hard to follow the gospel? Why do you have to make things up? And follow doctrines of demons, like the Bible says in Timothy, they'll do in the last times, depart from the faith, and serve doctrines of demons, and walk after those things. Because I don't want to be responsible in my life, for following the word of God. I do. Amen. Why? Because I want to make heaven my home. I don't want to miss out. 
I don't even want that much of my life to miss out. When Jesus comes, I want to be ready. Poof, we're dingo. I hope none of you are here to ask that question. <laughs> Amen. Second, first Thessalonians 5, 6. Therefore, let us not sleep. As do others. Watch and be sober. Don't make your Christianity be a slumber Christianity. Watch what's going on in the world. Pray, because many don't. And let us watch and be sober. Be sober in your walk in Christ. Amen? Revelation 19, 9. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is you, God's called you into the marriage supper of the Lamb. These are the true sayings of God. Or you could say these are the true believers of God. Because you've made yourself ready to enter in when Christ comes. That trumpet's going to sound. And only the saved in Christ will hear it. Only those that have made themselves ready to hear that sound, will be gone. Amen? Revelations 3.20. How do you make yourself ready? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he be with me. What's that door? The door of salvation. Jesus knocks at your heart. If you open up your heart to the gospel, to the truth of your life before God, and you allow Jesus to come in and sup with you, he's not just going to come in and pig out with you. He's going to come in and have fellowship with you. Anybody here just go to somebody's house and have dinner with them? Don't say a word, just eat and leave. Well, you're rude. <laughs> we talk. That's what Jesus is going to do. You open the door, he'll come into you. He'll fellowship with you. He'll give his life to you. He'll minister to you. It's called salvation. When you ask Christ into your life, you're making yourself ready. That's the beginning step of making yourself ready for the Lamb, for the marriage. Hallelujah. Revelation 26. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The first resurrection is the coming of the Lord. He's coming for you. Are you ready? The second death has no power over the first resurrection. He has no power over you. Those are reserved for those who didn't believe. Those who sat in a church all their life saying they're a Christian and lived like a devil. And didn't believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Didn't apply it to the life. Well, they belong in the fire. The everlasting fire. That's what the Lord says. And let me say this. People that have been deceived and sit in churches. Under the deception of the gospel. Are people that need salvation. We need to reach them. Because they're God's people. There's just not sinners out there that don't know Christ. Sinners in churches don't know Christ either. Because Satan goes to church. And deceives many people. So we have to reach them with the truth. Amen? But most of all, the greatest way to reach these people is to love them. To love them as Christ loved you. Amen? And how do you love them? By telling them the truth. Amen. 
Don't compromise the word. Let them know. Revelations 1, 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever and ever. You and I are kings and priests. Revelations 20, no once, 22, 7. You're ahead of me. <laughs> Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. You're blessed if you keep the prophecy. How are you blessed? In the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise, and those that remain shall be caught up and be with the Lord forever in the air. The rapture's coming, and there's going to be no sin in heaven. So if you keep the prophecies of the book, it'll keep you from deliberately sinning. And when you do sin, the book tells you to repent, and you'll repent, and Christ will cleanse you again. So you're not judged on what you did before you knew Christ. He says he's cast that as far as the east is to the rest, and he remembers them no more. It's what you do after you receive Christ that you stand before the Lord and be judged. That's why we need to go before God all the time and say, Lord, oops. You can say that to the Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Oops. I boo-booed. Well, Rangers, Mr. I boo-booed. Forgive me. Amen? And he'll forgive you. And just walk and keep going on in life. And just don't do what you oopsed about. Amen. Revelations 11.3. Blessed are he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophet and keep those things which are written thereof for the time is at hand. This is talking about obedience. Being obedient to the word of God. Not being obedient to what you think the Word of God means, but being obedient to the Word of God and to what it says. There's a big difference. Because what is the heart? Jeremiah says it really, really good. The heart is and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? So if you think you know your heart, you need to quit living in deception. You don't know your heart at all. Amen? You didn't know you were going to flip out at that time when you flipped out. You had no idea. Your heart didn't come and say, you're going to flip out in two seconds. <laughs> you don't know your heart. But Christ does. Amen? So we have to be obedient to the gospel. Not obedient to a church. I'm glad you're obedient to come to church. But if you think the church is going to save you, you're absolutely wrong. If you think the church is going to change you, you're absolutely wrong. The Word of God's going to change you. That's why you come to church, to hear the Word of God so the Word of God can change you. I love you folks, but I can't change you. I don't want to change your diapers. I want the Lord to change you. And if the Lord changes you, we're going to have a great, healthy church. Amen? But you have to allow him to change you. Amen? And it's going to be a fun time here. It's going to be a great time. Because we'll all be in unity. One mind. Serving the same God. The same way. Revelations 22, 14. Blessed are they that do the, his commandments, and they that might have... That they might have right, oh my goodness, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Our great reward is awaiting us. And it's such an easy life, a Christian life. Give your life to the Lord. Serve God. Be obedient to his word. Love one another. Love his people. Gives you a free ticket to heaven. Amen. So simple. So peace and safety will come, but not through man. That ain't going to happen. The blessing will be for the overcomers. That's you, overcome by the blood of the Lamb. 
and the victories and the victors in the last war on earth for your life. Do you know when that stopped? Because wars do end. The last war on earth stopped and you gave your life to Jesus. And the victor entered into your life, into your spirit. You don't have to fight the war anymore. You don't have to battle anymore. <coughs> Jesus Christ will do it for you. Amen? He just has to be, go before the commander and get his instructions. <laughs> and fight the good fight of faith. I love what Paul said at the end of his life. I have fought the good faith. I have run the good race. I've done it. I'm ready. Come and get me. Take me home, Lord. I've run the good life. I've had a good life. I've kept the faith. I've been obedient. I've done all that you want me to do. Amen. That's what we need to do. Let the book of Revelations talk to you. Read it. It's an amazing book. Amen. That's all I have this morning. Amen. So peace unto you. Amen. Keep the gospel. Let the Lord help you. Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning. If you're here, you're unsure of your salvation. You don't know if Christ came at this moment, you'd go to heaven. I have news for you. You can make sure by accepting Christ as your Savior. I don't want you to accept religion. I don't want you to accept something that you're not sure of. But you can be sure of Jesus Christ and his power and his dominion over your life if you will allow him to come into your life. Your decision. You can't live off your parents. You can't live off of each other. You can't live off of a church. You have to live with Christ. Amen? God's calling some people to make a decision for him. You can come forward, we can pray for you, or you can make that decision on your own and tell somebody. God's speaking to you. Do you have enough courage to raise your hand so we can pray for you? Amen. So if you're all saved here then, let's live for Christ. Let's live as people of the book of Revelations, overcomers. Look at Paul, man. He's on an island. He's separated from the world. And he gets a revelation. You know why he was on that island? For preaching the gospel. That's why he put him there. The emperor didn't like it. Get that stuff out of my face. Puts him on an island all by himself. Well, there's other people, but... And then he writes the book of Revelations on an island. Island of Patmos. Out in the middle of nowhere. And he gets the biggest book in the Bible. The revelation of Jesus Christ for our lives for the end time. Amazing. What can God speak into your life? Amen? <coughs> Who can you tell about the gospel? What revelation can you give to people in their lives that would bring them to Christ? Amen? Think about it. Pick somebody out. What do you mean, just go to the grocery store and grab somebody? <laughs> well, that might be fun. <laughs> but for me, maybe, because I'm kind of that kind of character, but you might not be. Just ask God what you can do for him. Amen? And live in that way, man.